And the Quran, in, in my view, quite precisely describes the deification of a prophet as ghulu. Because this was a consistent pattern in medieval history, especially pre-Islamic history, that in the same way that the human beings deified kings and queens, whatever was put in a truly elite status, the clear tendency in early history was to deify and deification what what that deification meant is very complicated because it it meant many different things in many different contexts and in many different situations but it always arose out of a sense of elitism that someone could not be truly good unless they are divine that it, 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 there's a wonderful article I read years ago, I don't even remember who wrote it, about the that part of what the medieval world rebelled against was the rationalism of Greek philosophy that rejected deification of the truly gifted because there was in, medi in the medieval world a truly skeptical outlook vis-a-vis -vis humanity that a normal human being could not be truly good and that the truly good had to be either angelic or divine, in other words, superhuman, because the skeptical outlook towards the, the common, the laity, is that the laity is always ignorant, um, barbaric, uh, stupid, silly, or, you know, all the faults and all the good qualities are reserved for the elite. But the elite cannot share with the laity just common attributes. The elite had to be distinguished from the laity by the elite being considered divine. So when the Quran describes that as ghulu, to my mind, I say, wow, that's exactly it. Because the reason you deified is because of your skepticism and negative outlook as to the common human being. It could, Jesus could not be truly good unless Jesus was not like other human beings. It, Part of the, is, and I've said this repeatedly, because Muslims have never said it, and it's amazing that they haven't, that part of the Islamic revolution was to come and to restore belief in the lay human being, the average human being. No, a human being can be super without being divine. Now, this is a huge thing. This is why Muslims found it unoffensive to read and embrace Greek philosophy. It, it, Greek philosophy talked reason. Socrates was not divine. Aristotle was not divine. Plato was not divine. They understood that logic. The church fought Greek philosophy because they didn't understand that logic. How could the lay person reach, I can't hear, so I often have a hard time pronouncing words, ecclesiastical 
aspirations, how could the layperson reach that celestial position? That has to be only for the elite who are touched by the divine. So, subhanAllah, I mean, just the Quran has these numerous little things that make you pause and say, wow. You know, just what an amazing text. So when the Quran describes it as ghulu, it's exactly that. Ex- being excessive, being um, extremist, literally. It's like, you know, your, 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 your way of thinking about the nature of human beings is messed up. 